والهجرة الانتقال من بلد الشرك إلى بلد الإسلام والهجرة فريضة على هذه الأمة من بلد الشرك إلى بلد الإسلام وهي باقية إلى أن تقوم الساعة والدليل قوله تعالى إن الذين توفاهم الملائكة ظالمي أنفسهم قالوا فيما كنتم قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجروا فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا إلا المستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان لا يستطيعون حيلة لا يستطيعون حيلة ولا يهتدون سبيلا فأولئك عسى الله أن يعفو عنهم وكان الله عفوا غفورا Welcome back to a new video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, so, I'm heading to a good friend of mine so that we can hang out at the beach with the children. And I decided to make a video. Oh, there goes the ad. Hi. <laughs> Where's his prayer rug? You can't go to the mushroom. Okay, anyway. So, okay, so I've been talking to a few sisters about the issue regarding uh, people mixing the two ideas of hijra and going to go study. So, I've mentioned in a, another video how this, these two issues were uh, given to us in um, our communities, especially in the United States. I don't know I don't know about the communities in England or Canada, but I know in the United States, um, those of us who have gone to, for example, Yemen, Egypt, um, especially those two places, and uh, Morocco, for those who uh, remember the days when um, Morocco was the place to go study. Um, Studying and hijra have been mixed together, and because people were mixing these two ideas, and they are currently still mix mixing these two ideas, uh, many get become stagnant, complacent after a couple of years of uh, uh, you know pursuing studying they um they kind of like fall back off studying and then they get into living but they never transitioned from the state of studying and what i mean by the state of studying is usually people come over with um, savings to go study they'll go over to egypt and back in the days people were going to yemen with their savings to go study study Islam, study Arabic, study the Quran. And then, like I said, the, the issue of hijrah was mixed with it. So then after a while, they are focusing on living. But in order to focus on living, you must have an income. You must be able to live like a migrant. And due to them mixing the two ideas, uh, they, they, the, those people who attempted both 
many of them never transition from one state to the next. So I'm going to expound on it a little bit more. I'm going to give some examples. Um, Hijra is its own subject and it has a, its own focus and it should be focused on alone, apart from studying. And studying is its own subject in its own lane and it should be focused on alone. Um, and I'll give some examples of that. It's not based on Islamic studies, but it's based on studying. So individuals who go to travel abroad, and some of you may have, uh, uh, I'm sorry, going to study abroad in a study abroad program that your university provides or your college provides. Uh, most individuals who come to any country on a student visa or for studies, secular studies, they are not in the mind frame of being an immigrant. They are not trying to be an immigrant at the same time. They are focused on studying, getting their studies done, and returning to their home country. In, in the process or in the course of them studying in their particular country, their host country, they may decide that one day they want to come back and live that to, in that place. But those are two separate ideas and those conclusions and those intentions of becoming a, an immigrant to that country happens separately. It does not happen at the same time and nor do they try to mix the two. Likewise, individuals who migrate to any country, and some of you may also understand this as well, being some of you are children, uh, first generation or second generation of immigrant parents to the UK, to the US, to Canada, whatever, however. When um, immigrants come to a country, they are not coming with studying in mind. Um, if they pursue an education, it will be after they are settled and they secure housing and they secure work or their businesses or whatever. But survival and getting integrated into, the, into that society is the number one thing on the list. So likewise, when the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they migrated to Medina, the very first thing that they sought was housing, marriage, and where's the marketplace, as uh, some of the narrations go. They asked about where the marketplace was so that they can gain money for their families. Okay? And then, of course, we learned as they were living their lives in Medina, then classes were established. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, used to uh, teach them. He set aside a day in the week to teach them. And the women asked for the same. So it's no difference for us during these times as we see from modern day migrants the formula and the blueprint to migrate somewhere is to focus solely on migration and getting established in that country focusing on housing focusing on integration focusing on uh, making sure that you have the correct paperwork in order uh, getting your children in school if you choose to put them in schools and securing your everyday living so that you can function as a normal human being in society. If you try to mix studying and throw that in the mix in the very beginning of you trying to immigrate somewhere, then this is, this, uh, it doesn't work. And it confuses your brain because you cannot focus on two things, two major life-changing things at the same time. And no one does this, actually. So I don't, you know, we have to mentally separate this idea of studying that uh, and and uh, hijra, which is migration, because even linguistically, not shariyan. Besides being uh, shari, migration is hijra in linguistic. So even a non-Muslim Arab says the word muhajir. 
the migraine. Okay? Um, it has its linguistic implication and it also has its Islamic or uh, Shara'i uh, meaning. So just to put that out there. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to mention it because there are several individuals who they were headed to Egypt and it's the same story. I want to make Hijra. And then they say in the same breath, oh yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to study. And I'm like, um, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It's one or the other. Focus on one or the other. Okay? A distinction has to be made. A mental separation has to be made. Choose one or the other at a time. Okay? And the proof is in the pudding. We have story after story of individuals who are failing. They have to come back home because they didn't secure uh, work when they went to Egypt. They are not even thinking about working. They're studying. I mean, for forever, I guess. I don't know. Um, you know, same thing for Yemen. People are, you know, working. I'm sorry, not working, but they had... Um, saving some individuals in Yemen did transition into work I know some personally actually they they got it once they were there and they were studying Arabic and they gained some of the, some of the things that they wanted they set out to do their Quran memorization they transitioned they got it because they wanted to make Yemen their home and there's nothing wrong with that if you went initially for studying and you don't want to return back to the United States then fine but let one let one idea finish and then start the new one, even if it's in the same trip, you know, uh, consecutively. That's that's not a problem. But don't be confused. Don't confuse the ideas. That's my whole point. So that's basically what I have to say about it. And I hope it was hope uh, helpful for someone um, who is in this predicament. Uh, many many individuals who are new to this uh, I would say you may be coming to the Dawa and they want to go study they are going to ask questions to those who have preceded them and going to go study so if those who preceded them have a dysfunctional way of, uh, of study of going to study then, then the, the, this is the this is the advice they're going to give this uh, this type of advice to individuals who are new and they don't know how to do it. So my advice will be this. You, you must look at individuals who migrate to a country. There are many immigrants here in the UAE. Okay? Many of them. There are many uh, students here who come from different countries to come here to study. Whether that, are, that is Islamic studies or secular studies. They come here for university. But the two are never mixed. If you ask the students at the universities, do you plan to ever move to the UAE? They will say, yes, I would like to come back here to live one day, absolutely. But they can't focus on, they can't focus on both. And those people who have already established living here, then they 100% absolutely plan, many of them, to enroll their children in colleges, universities here, or they allow their children to pursue their Islamic studies uh, while living here, but they've already established residency and work and business, etc. I also would like to mention that I don't think that it is right that if someone wants to make Egypt their home for Hijra, they want to migrate to Egypt that they shouldn't be ridiculed if they decide to move in areas um, that people who are in study mode do not live in. If a person wants to make Egypt their home, they should be able to move to affluent areas because Egypt is, compared to the United States, is not that expensive. If someone wants to go to Egypt and pay $800 to $1,000 a month in a very affluent area to mix with individuals who are doing business and they want to integrate into the society and they want to see 
how they can be a part of the society outside of studying, then they should not be criticized because it's a Muslim country and you should be able to be productive and come to Egypt just to be productive outside of studying, especially if a person has already made that journey to study. If, I, if that individual wants to come back to explore the, uh, the financial or the business side of Egypt, then they should be able to do so without being ridiculed or ostracized by those who are in study mode or in this in the study community, uh, Islamic study community. Um, same thing for well, I can't really say that about Yemen because Yemen is you know is is in is not uh, suitable right now. But if those people who want to go to Morocco, same thing. They want to go there just to live then they should be able to do so without being criticized after all hijra is about going to a muslim country and living in a muslim country and being with the muslims um somewhere down the line someone has reduced the muslim countries to studying alone and um they have reduced the Gulf countries, such as UAE, for example, Saudi Arabia, to working alone, um, and this is this is not right. And the distinction must be made. You can do both in any of the Muslim countries. You can, if you want to go to Sudan, you can pursue business. You can live. You can go there to live. You can make it a hit your destination. You can do what you like. Anyone can do what they like, as long as they are not doing something haram, they can do what they like. And they shouldn't be ridiculed and criticized. If a person wants to go to Malaysia, if they want to go to Indonesia just to be with the Muslims, then that's what they, they have the prerogative to do that. That is their right. And no one should criticize them, and nor should they be pressurized into thinking that they should only be going overseas to study and then returning back to wherever you're from to teach just putting that out there so that's uh that's all i have to say on the topic and i ask allah to grant you all tawfiq in your migration efforts and i will see you in the next video